This is our sixth video in the SQLite with Android series. In this series, what we're going to do is look at how we can use SQLite to simplify, enchant, and amaze. And I'll show you an example. This is the original plantplaces.com search screen. You see it has all kinds of bells and whistles on it, all kinds of things to search by, which makes perfect sense to me as a plant person. But when I asked my wife to go to plantplaces.com and search for Redbud, and she went to the search screen, she pointed out something that I didn't see because I wasn't really looking at it the right way, and that is that, is that this is not at all intuitive to a homeowner. Where do I put Redbud? In all these boxes, where do I put Redbud? I thought, you know what? She's right. Here's the new Plant Places search. On the home screen, you can still get to the old Plant Places search, but on the home screen, allow me to expand this a little bit so we can get better resolution. On the home screen, search plants by name. Boom. That easy. Uh, you can add color and bloom data if you want, but the idea is search plants by name. Doesn't matter which name you choose. I can say red bud. If I start typing in red, B-U-D, and we see it will autocomplete. Uh, the Latin name for red bud is Circus canadensis. I can type in Circus. And there we go. I can type in canadensis. And there are actually several with canadensis, uh, several plants with canadensis. There we see eastern red bud down there. I can type in uh, Chinese red bud. And there we go. I can search by any name I wish using one box. So what's the secret to this? The secret is we have to allow search to occur across multiple fields. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our offline plant DAO and I'm going to look at our search screen and I'm going to do some advanced SQL here. Okay, I'm going to do some advanced SQL. We're going to look at, uh, what is it? Let's see. Um, oh, and actually I'm in the live plantplaces.com. One second, please. Offline plant DAO. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the method uh, fetch plants. And we see that right now we're searching where the common name is like the search parameter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add it so that it will also search across genus, species, and cultivar, whatever the user chooses to enter. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take this part because I kind of like it. I'm going to keep this uh, common search term, and I'm going to add to this... Um, I'm going to I'm going to paste it on the end and say or and then I'm going to say genus like the search parameter uh, and then I'm going to paste it one more time on the end. This is going to look really messy. I'm going to warn you uh, or and then we'll say here species like the search parameter and then we'll say or and we'll say cultivar. This is really hard to see on this screen, so I'm going to break this down. Select star from plants table where, okay, common like search parameter, or genus like search parameter, or species like search parameter, or cultivar like search parameter. Uh, so what you see here, let me see if I can line this up a little bit better, is that we're adding each of the th four name columns. And we're using the same search parameter. We're searching across these three columns, common, genus, species, and cultivar. Because we're using the OR clause, because we're using the OR clause, the search parameter only has to be present in any one of these columns. It does not have to be present in all. It only needs to be present in one of the columns. So in this case, what we're doing is we're taking a search term and we're searching across four different columns. So again, if we go to the Plant Places website model, uh, we're providing the user with one search box instead of providing the user with four search boxes. And that's much more friendly, much simpler, as in the Android design paradigm of simplify, uh, amaze me, and enchant me. I'm, uh, Simplify my life, amaze me, and enchant me. It's much simpler for a user. So what I type in now is going to search across 
any of those columns, common genus, species, or cultivar. A little bit of a goofy syntax, especially because we're using like, and it's also a very inefficient query time-wise, time -wise. but luckily we're not, uh, we're, we're not looking at a very large data set. Because I'm doing that, I should probably also adjust my get all names method. Right now I'm saying select distinct common name from plants table, and then I'm adding those uh, to my list of names. Uh, this is going to be a bit ugly because I'm going to copy paste and what I should really do is make some methods out of this. Um, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to right click on here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to refactor and I'm going to say extract method and this looks good and we're going to say populate names. Uh, watch closely. This is kind of tricky. What's going to happen, it's going to take all the stuff I've highlighted and pop that into a separate method, which is going to be really nice because that's going to save a lot of work. Uh, actually, you know what? Hmm. I can go one more step here. Yes, I can. I can. You know what? Let me go one more step, make this a little bit nicer. I'm going to take this entire chunk in blue, which is the part where we're iterating over uh, a, a query and putting the query results into an array list. I'm gonna take that, right click, and say refactor, and I'm gonna say extract method, and that's gonna be even cleaner. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Uh, okay, string, we're gonna call this select string, and I think we're looking good. Okay, method name, we're gonna say populate array, uh, collection from query. That's fine. That'll work. And OK. What, what's going to happen as soon as I choose OK? The blue highlighted text is going to be replaced with one method call to populate collection from query. And that method call, populate collection from query, is going to then contain all of this blue highlighted uh, code that we're looking at here. So I choose OK. Boom. There we go. So it simply took all that cursor stuff, moved it into a new method called populate collection from query. And now what we do is we have this query we call populate collection from query. Now it becomes very simple. Now what we do, uh, let's see, I'll add some comments here. Populate the, or let's say, add the query results to all names collection, okay? Uh, I'll put some javadoc comments on this newly created method, and I'm going to say accept a query and a collection. Run the query and populate the collection with the query results. Uh, all names, the collection that we will populate, and select string the query to run. That'll work. And I'll save. Now what I'm going to do, I just need to do this. Let me uh, disconnect from the, dip, from the emulator. I need to simply do this four times, and it's crazy easy how easy this is going to be. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to copy, and we're going to paste, and instead of common, we're going to say genus, and then populate collection from query, uh, let's see, gosh, I should really rename this one common, unique common, uh, we'll say unique common. Okay, unique genus, that's fine. Okay, paste again, and instead of common, we'll say species. Okay, and we'll call this variable, instead of unique genus, we'll call it unique species, and unique species. And one more time, except this time for cultivar. Uh, select distinct cultivar from plants table and then we'll change the variable to cultivar. We could actually have made this even a little bit fancier. We could have put the entire select distinct statement into this other method, but I'll keep it out here in our get all names method because that way populate collection from query could be any query. So if we want to call this for some other query we could, which I don't know if we will, but okay, I think we're good. Uh, looks like I misspelled something here, cult, cult VR, cultivar, cultivar. There we go. 
So what we're going to do is get a list of unique uh, genus, species, cultivar, and common names. I'm going to go ahead and choose Save. And I think we're in good shape, so I'm going to Control M. And then we'll run this in the debugger. Or run it in the emulator. And actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and put a breakpoint on here. Uh, yeah, no, you know what? I'll put a breakpoint on the search screen. How about that? So that way we can take a look. Um, I guess I could put, yeah, we'll go ahead and put it on the um, offline plant DAO. I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, yeah, let's do that. I'll go ahead and put the breakpoint on the get all names, and we'll watch that execute. And now I'm going to right click, uh, debug, and boom, there we go. And we'll sit back, relax for a moment as it comes up on the emulator. Okay, the emulator's up. I'm selecting search plants. And with any luck, it should hit the debugger here in a moment as it tries to populate the autocomplete text. And it looks like the debugger's hit. Okay, we're going to start with an empty all names. And the first thing we're going to select are all of the common names, which we've already done before. Okay, so we run the populate. Now let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to go up to the variables hit tab and control M. And let's take a look at what's in the all names collection. And we have quite a few. We have quite a few. We have all the red buds. Okay. And it's going to keep going like so. So we'll let that keep going. I'm going to control M. And again, it populated these locally. So it's a lot easier than if it were to populate uh, from across the network. Now for genus, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, step into the populate collection from query method and what we're going to see let's see how many times this runs okay so we move to first okay and then let's see uh, cursor dot get string zero we'll see what this is what we're going to see here is because i use the distinct keyword we'll see each genus only one time so um Value. There we go, Circus. So the first one is Circus. And I iterate. And the next entry should not be Circus. It should be something else that's unique. So Control Shift I. And what we see is Acer. Sure enough, it's unique. So you see Acer there. So while we have numerous Circus in the database, because we use the distinct keyword, we're only adding one to this autocomplete list. So we have Circus, Acer, and then what's this one? Aeschylus, uh, which is Buckeye, okay? And it's gonna continue going through. I'll choose F7, which is gonna step back. Um, if I look now at variables and I control M, last time we had 71, now we have 135. I'm gonna go to the 100 to 134 and take a look. Quercus, Rhodia, Rumex, Salvia, Solenostemon, and Thuya. Notice that none of the genus are duplicated, even though we have multiple uh, Circus in the database, multiple Acer in the database, because we use because we're using that distinct keyword, we are getting only unique in, uh, results back. Circus, Acer, Aeschylus, Aloe, Alpine, uh, Alpinia, uh, one I can't pronounce off the bat, so on and so forth. These are coming back unique. So I control M and then I F6. Okay, now we're going to get distinct species and distinct cultivars. And let's see what we finally get. What's the final list? Uh, how many items do we have in our collection? Probably quite a few at this point. I'll scroll to the top and our collection has 202 entries in it. Okay, 202 entries in it. So quite a few entries. I'll control M again. And now I'm going to go ahead and choose play, which is going to return this collection back to my user interface. And now it's going to populate my autocomplete text. So we see just as last time, if I type in red, it will show me red bud, red maple, anything that has red in it. Uh, so red and then MA will show me uh, red maple as I type that in. But what's nice is at the same note, I can also search on something like Circus, and it will autocomplete that when I type C-E-R. Uh, 
Looks like we're a little bit off. There we go, Circus. So it took a moment to update, but there we go. There's Circus. If I search on Canadensis, which is the species, Canaden, like so. And again, on a real phone, it would be a lot faster than this, but we see uh, it's showing me all of the can all of the species Canadensis. And then I could even search on a cultivar if I want, like, um, I want to say weeping. Let's see if we have anything weeping. Or I probably don't need an H in there, do I? Uh, okay, well, white red bud, that'll work. Uh, uh, W-E-E. -E. Oh, you know what we do have? Uh, we do have, there we go, weeping red bud and weeping crab apple. So notice that we can search on a common name or a cultivar name. Uh, the red bud and the crab apple uh, have not much in common, to be honest with you, but there are two different weeping forms, so we're able to search on weeping. So by using a little bit of uh, SQL engineering and our like clause, as we see a like and an or, and the select distinct, we're able to provide the user with a very responsive feedback and a, uh, a feedback that allows them to start typing and then we simplify their lives by giving them suggest suggestions on what uh, they might choose from. If you're writing a mobile app and you have a text field, first of all, I encourage you to minimize text fields. Think of other ways to enter data. Sliders, things like that, always a better idea. But uh, something that involves touch. But if you are uh, using a text field, I seriously, seriously uh, would, would persuade you to think about using autocomplete text to make the, lives, the user's life easier. So, quick wrap up, what did we use? Uh, we extracted a method where we had stuff that we would have copy and pasted over and over again, if not. Uh, we also used the select distinct so that we would only get one of each genus, species, and cultivar back. Uh, and we also used a kind of interesting like assembly to allow us to have one search field that would actually search across four columns in the database, yet we still have the integrity of four separate columns. So that's all for the sixth video, and as of now, I believe that's our last video on SQLite. Hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to your feedback. Thank you.